Hello everybody, it's Amiga Rob here and today we're going to be looking at Amiga Format Issue 80's cover discs possibly only 80A because we were in the bleak period of the history of the Amiga at this point um, there was a Christmas edition of Amiga Format in that year and um, yeah, I'd say it was pretty bleak. Um, the cover was just a uh, a white cover with a star on the front, like a silver star. Interesting design, but um, reflective of how things were starting to become a bit rough in the Amiga department. There were most of the developers had completely deserted during '95. Those that remained, um, it had been a real nosedive for the system in terms of development um, ever since the previous year when Commodore fled the scene it, it wasn't it was turning out to not have a market like the Spectrum and the Commodore 64 did where even though there were outdated systems they continue to produce games and sell games but at a cheap price maybe because the cost of development was higher I don't know um, anyway Amiga Format 80A is probably one of the last half decent discs I remember it's, and it's more or less just a bunch of um, public domain utilities so I think I've got the right disc here um, and it's asking whether I'd like to install to a floppy or hard drive so I think it would expand it onto multiple floppy disks I'm going to try doing it onto the hard disk that is if I can into the right window, let's see. Uh, please enter the path name you used to install to. So if I say point one, F80, I don't know if it's going to correct a create a directory or if it's going to fall over. Oops, made a mistake. Okay. No, it's not going to create a directory. Well, I'll risk just putting just a very one note for your create zone. So it's decompressing some archives now into folders. I mean, it doesn't even actually tell you which one it was. Okay, reboot now. On a real Amiga, that would have taken ages, but. Um, just to virtually eject this disk and then reset. And here we are in Workbench. There's a virus Z running. Let's have a look. Ah, there we go. It has given me a separate. Oops, I'll just put that in the directory there. One of the things I always found hard to adjust to when the um, when I was starting to use Windows machines was that you didn't get a um, that the desktop didn't represent the file structure on the disk. Ultimately, that's the better way to work. But with the Amiga, <laughs> your desktop sort of represented the file structure. Apart from this desktop in the background you could put applications on that background and they didn't have to be uh, they didn't actually represent the disk structure you know because you know for like system this folder that is a physical folder on the disk that exists on the disk whereas on Windows you have work groups and all that kind of caper anyway let's have a look and see what we've got in here wow really messy folder that's probably because there's three disks all bunged into one or something like that so let's clean up yeah right, so we've got virus checker I'll probably send virus to Z bonkers if I try to use that now I think at this point we're talking January 1996 I was probably mainly buying the Amiga format out of desperation and um, 
part loyalty, I guess, just hoping that um, the Amiga was going to recover. Um, but there is a utility on here that I think I was thinking of last time around. Uh, let me see. So the last time around I did the Super Jam disc as, as part of um, my retrospective and Super Jam has a really annoying thing where it looks for a volume called um, System um, and you have to have an assign somewhere to have a, sis a system assigned to Super Jam's directory. I've no idea why they did that, it's crazy. Um, documents. Now I think this program Great, okay. Uh, I think this program allows, uh, brings up a registered, uh, like a requester allows you to assign, set up assigns without having to do it to a shell. Uh, configuration files. I could be wrong. Well, this might not be the one I'm thinking of. I could do with assigning locales or somewhere. Uh, Simon's mouse place is standard. Please insert volume. Yeah, this is what I was thinking of. Save the settings. So assign. Right, I can't do that because this is just the demo version. Well, it's a part free where part share version. Maybe it was assign X, the one that I was using before. Anyway, let's give it a try. I'm going to try it with Super Jam. Default restore for real. Oh, you're about to install a very powerful utility with a capital U for your convenience using the Amiga. Well, it is a good idea. It's something that should have been built in to the Amiga. Where do you want to be installed? We'll put it in work start. Uh, where do you want a size there to put this config file? Let's put it in S. That's the right place to put it. Uh, hey, we don't need German. Thank you very much. Catalog files. Ooh, okay. We don't have locale. Ooh, I should probably sort that out. So I'm actually going to have to assign some. Oh, not new shield. This is very useful. I can't remember if there's a standard folder called locale. Is it in the catalogs folder? Oh, I might have really messed up that install. It's probably supposed to be a locale folder which has those catalogs in. Anyway, we'll put this with the sign Z for now, I think. And I'll have to look at... Do you want the nice 16 colour icon? Yeah, we'll have that, even though we'll never look at it. Proceed. Let's go have a look, because we've got the uh, more colours. I don't like... There's a thing called uh, MUI, Magical User Interface, that a lot of applications started relying on using on the Amiga. Which I thought was a bit over the top, and uh, they had special icons. Introduced special icons, yeah, which that probably is expecting. Used a lot of CPU. Anyway, that's. F uh, should we reset and fire this up? Or can we just start it up here? Did I run that then? It's a bit hard to tell, isn't it? Oh, here we go. This program is free where. Hey, thank you very much. Assign this track. Right. So let's try this out on Super Jam. Right. Oh. Okay, yeah, we get that warning. Okay. It doesn't seem to have worked because I was expecting 
Right, maybe I need to reset. Super Jam again. Aha, uh -huh, now it's working. Yeah, we know that. Uh, oh, yes, thank you, Virus Z. Uh, right, current DIR. Oh, that's great. So, looking for volume system. This is different to the application. I think I was getting a meager format, not even really looking at the disks at this time. 21 years ago this. Uh, so yeah, it gives you the opportunity to just assign when it's looking for a volume to the directory you're in. So all I need to do is just click that. Oh, okay. Just click OK. It won't let me save, but it'll let me use it. And then it's happy. I can't hear anything. No sound. Okay, well, there may well be reasons for that, which uh, I'm not going to fuss myself about in a minute. No, we won't save, thank you. All. Right, well, that works. That's uh, that's uh, another bit of functionality we got there. That saves a bit of bother. So, um, let's see. Super Jam, what else have we got on this thing then? Oh, I thought I'd tidy that up, okay. We'll just uh, clean that up. And then do. Snapshot, I don't know about. Maybe I need to select things to snapshot them. Icon Chief, alright. Yeah, I've definitely never used loads of this stuff. I probably can be bothered. Uh, icon Chief, what does it do? Let's have a look. Uh, okay, we just cancel that. Uh, I think it's crashed. I think that assigns it's crashed the whole thing. It has, it's crashed. Well, that's wonderful. <laughs> I better get rid of that then, pretty pronto. Hang on. Right, well that assigns it could well be a problem because it looks like it did cause that to crash, so let's try. Let's just try again and see if we get the same thing happen when I cancel that. And cancel it. Yes, crashed it. Right, we need to get rid of that then. So, I think it was a sign X I was using before. I don't think I even used this application. So, system start up. Let's get rid of that. Let's just delete it. Useless. And then let's reset again. So, it's not loaded. Right. So let's find out what Icon Chief does. Okay. okay. Malware. Icon Chief. Description. Yeah, thank you. Program which causes a bunch of more than just usual six default icons for files. If you take a look at the Draw via web and use the optional file names. All files have no icon. So, a draw program project. The other three are reserved for disk, kickstart disk, and of course the trash can. To do what you miss, with each of the allies and default can be using them. It's a text kind of file. The workbench will give them this default kind as the real icon. I mean, to the file. Now, why don't you just get a purpose? Okay. Okay. Do I really want to install that? It sounds like a bit of a 
nonsense. I guess it means if you don't have, if you're doing view by show all files, it gives you some idea of what the um, content of the file is. If for files that don't have icons. I mean that could be useful in the current oh, I'll give it a go, I don't know how easy it'd be to uninstall um, if I just run it, what have I done? <sighs> well we'll soon find out because I can do down to this system folder. Oops. Could do the big Eliza button now. Right, let's close that. Open it again. And let's do show all files. Why not? Yeah, I don't think it's done anything, that thing. I've no idea what the point of that was, so... So far, we've got a 100% useless hit here. Now, this salve is a decent utility, so I'm not going to knock that. What's this? Ordering, ordering. Ordering. This to me looks like some sort of file manager, except it doesn't have anything to. Oops, can't think of it. Okay. Um. Yeah. Then copy or something like that, but why doesn't it have a? I oh, maybe need to do it like that. No. no. So how do you set that one? Oh, that's in here. Huh. Okay, it looks like some sort of disk manager utility. Iconify. All oh, right, that's. Let's have a look and see what it actually is. Pretty sure I had locale. What? Pretty sure I had locale working before. It wasn't giving me all this. What is it? Ordering preferences. It looks like a very strange file manager that they didn't bother to um, set a give two um, buttons to choose what side of the thing you want to go on anyway. This self, this is a good application. Funny how it's got it sort of installed and then install options. This self is an application written by the great Dave Haney. I think has a slight bug in it. Dave Haney is quite notable because he um, designed the logic for the uh, Amiga 2000, B2000, the non-German version, the American version, which um, was uh, far superior to the uh, Amiga 1000 and the um, original Amiga 2000 um, logic. And he added the hardware necessary for better expansions and everything. He also uh, did a lot of the design work on the Amiga 1200 as far as I'm aware. He's also a big man in video and I actually bumped into him on a forum about 10 years ago and exchanged a couple of messages with him. Top guy. Um, but he wrote this piece of software uh, which is disk recovery software and I can't really show much on it because I don't have any disks. Although having said that it lets you just scan any device. I guess it lets you you can do a hard disk. Oh, I'm yawning. That's not so good, is it? Salvage under the validate. Now, I have read there's a bug in this that it doesn't actually complete work until uh, on repairs. 
um, until you press a certain button, but I don't think I ever used to really do repairs. I used to try and do recoveries. File system, best guess. The guy was clever, he could write software. So this is a good program. But I have no need for it in this particular um, system. Wow, this is really... I don't really want to add much more to my C drive. Um, what's this? A1200. Icon of the construction. Do you have one? Now is that something that program has done? Alright, the only way to find out is to do a reset. Because if that's what it does, it says icon under construction. No? Alright, okay, so what is this about? This is freeware. Most fascinating A4000 Times Reference Guide. So this is basically a text file. This is the text file with information about the Amiga 1200. Can he, uh, I use an IBM high density driver on the 200? No, some hacks, da 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 da. But I actually didn't realise, well, I did give, uh, I gave someone for a really good price a few years ago on Ami Bay um, one of the very few PC floppy drives that are actually the Amiga floppy drives. They're high density, um, they're the same as the high density drives the Amiga needed. Um, not that I really had a need for it, I'm not going to be using high density discs in the Amiga, but they, I think they're compatible with standard density Amiga discs as well, so they're a rare direct replacement. Um, so this is pretty, I, I don't really understand why they'd put this on here. This is, a bit desperate. This is all information that you could fill out the magazine with. It's not hugely informative, but anyway, it's, you know, basic stuff. So not really a utility. Super Duper, I seem to recall this being a decent one. Is this a disc copier or is it... Oh, no, I'm thinking of Snoop... Yeah, this is a disc copier, I think. Let's see if we can get this. No, still like cow. How was I... Oh, because oh, it's looking for a mega guide, that's why. And I want to open it with multi-view. Multi-view will have no problems. Oh no, multi view ah, oh, because I've installed the newest version of multi guide and that's got a problem, right. Freeware high speed disk copy and formatter, two or something hundred for a disk to disk verify copy of thirty eight six for a four disk not verified format. Yeah, okay, I'm getting fed up with this locale thing. I'll just uh So it's a disk copy, it's something else that I can't really demonstrate. I mean, I think I used this, but I mean, how often do you copy disks even? No, new shells where you enter. Why don't you just click an icon? Oh, no, that's the old icon. Well, I really need to have a clean up on this system. Everything's falling to bits. Uh, I should deal with that for a bit. Okay. Um. Um. So yeah, I think this was just a good copier that just for copying straightforward unprotected disks. There was, uh, of course, X copy, which people tended to use to try and copy protected disks. Various levels of success. Interesting. I don't think I ever used this one either, but one of the options is having a hard disk buffer. I know I'd seen earlier versions of this, but I never saw a hard disk buffer and VD buffer. Right, I want to know what a VD buffer is. That sounds like virtual disk buffer. Because buffer would be 
RAM buffer. VT. Ah, I, uh, I wonder. And there was use of compression when you buffer or HD buffer mode. Right, so I guess that would mean that you're compressing on the fly. I mean, if you had a fast CPU, there might be a benefit in doing that. Because uh, a fast CPU and a fairly slow disk, because in theory you'd be writing less data to the disk. To a hard disk in RAM, there might be an advantage if you've got low RAM because then you could potentially do a copy without a disk swap on a an Amiga even with one meg. Uh, hard disk, I'm not sure. Let's have a look at the buffering system. Ah, I see. Okay, when you've got lots of copies, okay, so you can read it once and then copy. Also, if you had to create distribution disks using high rates such as hmm, what's this FMS disk? I have to look that up. Super duper and read those virtual disks. Okay, so you can. So if you've got something with a similar track st structure to a normal floppy disk, you can use that. I'm not sure I'd want to do that for multiple copies of a RAD drive. I'd much rather have a file on the disk because a RAD drive can't be protected. It's a, a, um, a disk in memory, a recoverable disk in memory, but it's still in volatile RAM and anything can write over that RAM. Check some sort of buffers. I've said that anything could write over RAM if you're using the RAM as a buffer. Probably your file on the disk is on the more better way of doing it. Check some of the buffers. Okay, so what was the VD option though? HD buffer. This is probably Supertube's most esoteric feature. You, by typing device name in the string name, you can select any device. The unit number is taken from the gadget with the number unit. The device you specify will use a buffer for your disks. Select like a track disk device name is able to write data at specific offsets. The main device you can use. In, okay, so RAD you can use using the VD buffer. Virtual floppy on hard disk. Okay, I've never heard of that before. That's interesting. A RAM buffer is killing them as soon as. Hmm. Okay, so there's some interest. The guy that wrote this has really thought about this. Who wrote this thing? And the hard drive buffer. And the file's an IFF file, so it's following the standard Amiga format. This is, uh, yeah, this is clever. Never really. I'd used Super Duper before, but I'd obviously used a much earlier version. It's sad, really. I was just picking up the magazine and I didn't really seem to use the stuff on it anymore. And there wasn't really much to look at in the magazine at this point. Who wrote this thing? Sebastian Vigna. Sebastiano Vigna. I wonder what he's up to now. I'll have to check him out at some point. Let's check him out now. 
Sebastiano Vigna. He's he's a professor. He's an information technology professor by the look of it. And he was doing his PhD in computer science at that time. Well, Sebastiano Vigna. He, oh, he's got his pro yet. He's got his things. He programmed the Amiga on his web. I'm looking at his website here, by the way. Uh, he wrote Mostra, which I remember. IFF viewer, the fastest Amiga disk copier. He wrote the specification for the palette change graphical IFF format. Interesting. Uh, Leggy, the multi window. Arex interface, text reader, and text info to Megavide converter. Interesting. Anyway, so I can't really demo this either. Oh, if I click that, that's probably going to kill Workbench. So, yeah, I can't show that. This is actually, I'm going to kill Workbench here. This is one button. There we go. Can't close Workbench. And it's gone down to one color because it's trying to maximize the available memory. This is 1993, this was written this version that's funny it's got it's uh, automatically mimicking the workbench screen so there's um, there are applications with one click that you can kill workbench and um, that's one of them which is a bit annoying although I think it's possible to reload workbench so, it's not super duper. We haven't done this TIFF 40.0, but I don't think we're going to because I don't really see the points. Because in theory, if you've got the data type, you should be able to load it into multi view. And also, I don't have any TIFFs to view. I do use them occasionally now, but. Alright, what's this? Arc. Okay. I think this is just an. Um, I just wanted to inform you of some important event. And it appears much like a standard system requester. Um, this is a guy who's unhappy. I know this is a requester system. A lot of programs use its libraries. Uh, So, fill system request is right. Oh, did I use this one? Did I ever use this? Right, let's try it. See what requesters look like. Uh, hang on. Hang on a minute. How do I install it? I probably needed to read that document. All right. Okay. Is that done? What it needs to do? The best way is to find out by. Loading up a shell, and uh, we can. Let's have a look and see what happens if I hit the tab key. Now, that's the standard requester, isn't it? Or is it? I don't know. I probably should have done them before and after. request to say this and jump through system messages to stop it send the control C by the break command
bit weird that it needs to run in a window. Oh, that was, maybe that's just 1.3. So how do you run it as a commodity? The commodities... Hang on. Update. Play sound file. Demand. Seven hundred microwave. Audio device. Uh, okay, that's absolutely nothing to do with that application. And this is... Okay, now it's having two output windows. Well, right, okay, let's see if I can get my head around this. What we could try and do is just. So if it changes the standard requesters. We could try and do is get it to point something where there's no disk in. No, it's not working. I'm not having very good luck today. I can't seem to get anything to work. Uh, size of it. Tiff, you, hang on a minute. Tiff, you, so what's Tiff 40.0? Ah, uh, maybe that's the data type. Maybe this is the data type. Yes, this is the data type. Okay, that didn't work. Well, I don't need a data type really. This is this is just a disaster, right? Play mod. Is there any mods here to play? Is the next question? Oh, I think there might be on the subscriber disk. So let me just insert the subscriber disk in a drive. Don't know whether this is going to want to expand to other disks. It's just bleak, though. I think. It's so sad what happened with the Amiga, how the bottom just drops out of everything. And, um, I mean, it was like a zombie publication. I was trying to work out, I think I stopped buying it around early the next year, early 97, and I think I bought the Christmas edition that year just to get a CD. Because uh, I was using a serial link to connect my Amiga to a, a PC with a, with a CD-ROM drive uh, just to get some essential files across. Let's have a look at the subs subscriber disk. I think there is some. Right, play mod. Well, there we go. Yeah, there's the subscriber's disk. Yes, there is music there. Extracts Jungle Walk. Okay. So yeah, I've no idea what any of this other stuff is on this uh, subscribers disc. But it does have this music. So mods, uh, as as I've mentioned before, are a format of uh, music file uh, that were particularly. Um, successful on the Amiga that are tailored very well suited to the fairly unique system the Amiga had of having um, four channels of audio that you could independently um, set the playback rate on so you could pitch um, you could pitch samples independently of each other which I guess really you only see on keyboards these days um, and they probably don't actually change the playback rate. They probably just um, do some internal scaling. I'm not sure. Anyway, let's have a look and see if this plays. That's fantastic. That is absolutely fantastic. Nothing works. 
Oh, it needs the PT replay. You must move the PT. Right. I mean, the I think one of the sad things that you can see on this is that before you would, with the Mega format, they would try and give you all the information you need to install. And, and the reason you need to do that is because you've always got new people coming, people that don't know everything. You can see now they're starting to, to take for granted that you're going to know how to do things and um, that's because there weren't there weren't new people coming to the Amiga now I'm going to I'm going to put this in the libraries but I'm not going to I'm not going to keep this uh, I don't think oh, sounds like one of my neighbours Hanging against the ceiling. Uh, there's something called Hippo Player. I think I'd like to try. Which I remember being quite a good mod player. Right, let's try it now. You got to be kidding me. Is there another library in there? Oh. I don't know whether this is just me being stupid, but nothing is working here. It's not working. I can't figure out how to do it. I can't be bothered. This is probably why I didn't bother with it at the time, and it is sad that they were. I mean, it wasn't Amiga Format's fault. It was just the way that the system had gone. It, yeah, you know, and it was pretty. I think generally it was a pretty bleak time for computers. Um, there was suddenly another boost in in performance on the PCs towards the end of the year. Um, sorry, towards the end of the decade, and they could start to do a few of the things that the Amigas should have been doing by that point. Let's have a look at the subscribers disc. Well, we've already looked at the music folder. So, I guess... Anne's in the process, got absolutely no music to play. Uh, installers... Extract HD install... Oh, is this another one where you want to boot from? I don't know. Extract Devers Man. Uh, Extract CB4, I mean, icons, let's check Rhino, okay, well let's have a look at this icons one first, Rhino icons, <sighs> Yeah, I don't have fast view. I mean, the number of commands you'd have to have. This is something. A really good utility would have been one that. Oh, I think you can do aliases actually. So let me see. I was about to say one would be good that you could set it up so that um, you can give one command line the name and um, sorry, one command and. Uh, uh, it has its file name but you can associate it with lots of other names so you can get them running other applications but um, there is a command line that uh, command that allows you to do that let's try that in fact I don't know if I've even got a gif data type here so that might not help um, 
let's have a look and see what this is. Why is he trying to open that for a readme? CFJPEG. Right. Go to trusty old multi view. This is a style of Magic Workbench. Oh yeah, Magic Workbench. I got confused there when I was talking about Magic User Interface. Actually, Magic Workbench was a separate thing that had all the flashy icons. And I was not a big fan of either because I just thought it was a resource hog and it meant that you just it just slowed down machines that were already, by industry standards, pretty slow. <sighs> <laughs> so I don't like them. Let's have a look at the icons anyway. You have to use special tools that dynamically redo all the palette. It's yeah, it's just so much about icons. Maybe that's why Icon Chief or whatever was on there. Having said that, these are just custom for individual applications, custom things. Okay, so that's boring. CB4A, this sounds thrilling, what is it? No icon yet. Clipboard enhancer, this sounds a bit more promising. Uh, now, I did have a clipboard enhancer application. did something that I have wanted Windows to do for years. In fact, any application. And it had multiple clipboards. So you were told, like, uh, instead of just doing control paste, you do like control paste and two. And it would paste from your second clipboard. It was, oh, excuse me, going again. Sending myself to sleep. It was, um,. It was a great thing, and I've never seen it reproduced anywhere, so... Let's see what it does. Let's ask him some money, keep on vibe with us. CV... Okay, that's it. What does it do? Look at my heart, so there's a way that it... The clip is a device that's programmed to copy data from one application and another used to place either the same application into another application capable of using the clipboard. Oh, now this is interesting. Okay, so the clipboard is is a device. Uh, the great way that the workbench, uh, workbench and the MegaDOS operating system works is that it has everything set up as devices and it means that you can c write for it quite intelligently now what he's saying here is that the Amiga has actually has in its built-in capabilities the ability to have 256 different units within its clipboard but almost all programs only use one so this is the program that does what I wanted it to do. It keeps track of every piece of data and lets you have multiple clipboards, basically. Or multiple pieces of information on the clipboard. So I think I've used something like this before. I'm going to install this because I think it's worthwhile. Uh, using it, let's see. Recalling clips. List. Oh, it's as it has lists. Hey. Eh? Oh, now I'm beginning to think this isn't as good as the application I had previously. Main window. See that what I had before was just a a thing that just just f quietly operated in the background. This is going to be a window. Uh, okay. Key file error. Clipboard enhancer, yeah. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to like the way this works, but we'll try it. Uh, 
Let's get back to our shell. It's sad there's no characters, no menus or anything. It's just on this bleak. Oh, it's so bleak. Oh. Right, blah, blah, blah. Oh, blah, he, blah, blah. Right. What you should do is, can we copy from here? Okay, then maybe it's a uh, control C, is it? Let's see. No, did I not manage to copy, or what have I done? Free, not free. Yeah. I've got a feeling this is going to be another thing that I cannot get to work. Select. If I do a copy, all right. It's, it's copied that text for me there. So if I open another document, let's say this. No, because it's trying to open. Right, let's sort one thing out while I'm here. Stick that on there. Because I'm getting fed up calling it up all the time. Um, and we copy that. Um, there we go then. I can see it saved both things and I can select them and I guess see if I can actually paste so I select the first one and then maybe I paste it into a shell no I think I can paste into this. Hmm, interesting. So what can I paste into? <laughs> I don't actually think I have any application here that I can paste into. Do I have any kind of notepad or anything like that? Funny. Look at that board is it saying with sixty four K. Ah, oh, hang on. This is a text editor. It's ancient. Does it have a insert buffer? I think this is the exact same version of Me Max that came with Workbench 1.3, and it was always a bit hangary. Micro Max. Oh, it looks awful. Yeah, it's the <laughs> Andy Finkel's version, original version. David Conroy and Andy Finkel, I think it's one of the Amiga developers, tweets it as 1986. You'd have thought they could have given us a text editor for Workbench 2 or 3 that opened in a default Workbench window and opened in a window rather than on a screen. 
does it have a paste? Is insert buffer a paste? I don't know. Insert file. CLI command. I, mean, I do think this is a text editor, I don't know. What kind of request does it give you? None. You have to. Get, it doesn't even give you a requester. Oh my days! I don't think this uses the buffer. I don't think this uses it, so I can't test it in that. Well, I'm sure it works beautifully. Another failure for me. Unable to test. Devman, oh, I think this one is fairly straightforward. Equally thrilling. I did just extract that, didn't I? Right. So where is Devman? Okay, Devman probably doesn't have an icon. Magic Workbench icons. Right. Okay, so I'm guessing all this does is that you move. Devices from the storage folder to the devs folder where they'd become active. So, you know, not a terrible idea that there's all the printers. Uh, key maps, data types. Well, that's handy, I guess. Tools. MFS, DFS. Well, okay. So that's that. Not going to use it. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a matter of dragging an icon, but. I've done this one yet. Jiv. Well, let's just find out what this one is. Okay. Okay, is it me or can I just not see it? That would have been a nice thing to have a a um, get this to automatically update when files are written to it. Jiv, what does this do? Use Jiv's default tool for image icons. It's sad how much functionality is having to be implemented by third parties. It was good, you know, because you get tailored things, but this to me looks like it's an application that when you have an image. Oh, is this a JPEG codec? Or data type, I should say. Codec class for JPEG support. Okay, so not date type is codec. What is it for? Oh, it's just a picture viewer. Okay, I thought it was something that was going to give preview pictures in their icons, but it's just a JPEG picture viewer.
And, you know, I don't think that was supported out of the box with Windows 95 yet. It might have been. In fact, it probably was. But 96, it probably almost definitely was. Eagle Objects. sadness will this be? First version of Eagle Freight from the TV series Space 1999. Blimey. Uh, I guess if you want to render it in a 3D program. I mean, that is pretty bleak. Let's have a look at the IFFF. IFFF. Don't actually see the IFF anywhere. Nope. I don't think that's going to open the other thing. So, I'm going to call this another failure. Look at this brush. I don't know what that's going to be. Okay, I don't know where that came from. What have we got left? Do icon. What does do icon do? It's installation. It says it's no longer freeware. It is now anywhere. Okay, but what does it do? Here's the question. Welcome to do icon. Thank you. If not, just delete it. Yep, what does it do? Okay, what can I do? The Lycan tool, but it's designed for quick shell usage and perfectly works together. Droid shapes pure can be raid resident. Display of icon relating values. Hmm. Okay, so I do with the icon. Interesting. Strip a strip number of bit players coming on across the eight bit players. Recursively deleting the old one point. Okay, so how does it do all this? Because it sounds like it's a commodity, but it's doing stuff that you'd expect some sort of application. We'll give it a go.
there whether or not that works. Probably didn't because I couldn't come up with a So it wants me to run it, it's not going to stick in the start up sequence or anything like that. Of course it wouldn't. Right, so it is a command, so it doesn't actually do anything particularly useful. I thought it was going to give me some new options with icons. It's more of a tool for copying stuff and transferring features. So. For all those utilities, I was convinced to be something useful. Really, only disk salve, and it's the only one. So, there was a virus checker I didn't bother running because I'm already running virus Z, and they'll send each other bonkers. So, the only other remaining disk is the first disk in the set, which is I think it's a demo of Breathless. So let's give that a spin. So when I first tried to play this, I um, was having trouble getting the sound to work. Ah, and now the sound has come in. So as you may be aware, uh, the Amiga started to suffer quite a bit when. Um, the Doom clones start to do quite well on the PC and the Amiga wasn't so well um, equipped to deal with uh, the requirements of uh, such games. Ironically it was probably the only thing that PCs were really quite good at and uh, apart from flight sims and other things that relied on a lot of CPU time. Um, And the Amiga was good at quite a lot of other things. Um, anyway. A bit surprised Power Computing released this. <laughs> they really are a hardware and. Um, a hardware manufacturer and rebadger. They were very good. I yeah. used to buy a lot of stuff from them. Um, I'd love to know how I fire. Oh, that sounded like I was firing. Um, how do I get out of here? So, oh, I've got this on a running on a machine that should be matched to a. Yeah, so it should be running at about a stock, uh, similar to a stock Amiga 1200. And people would complain about the tiny little screens. I don't think it's too bad actually compared to how these things were running when they first came out. Oh, there's a little midget. Oh. Not really sure what I'm supposed to do. Follow me. That, that square is looking quite... Pygmies. Oh, blimey, what's going on there? Uh, I'm not 
sure if there is yet. These are pretty uninspiring uh, enemies, I must say. Are they supposed to be Cybermen or what? <laughs> and each of these bullets looks like it's a little rocket launcher or something. I wonder if Power Computing were interested in sponsoring this, uh, publishing this, so they could get people to buy more expansions. Because you really did need. I mean, this is playable to me. I mean, but it does look a lot better. Uh, these sort of games look a lot better with accelerators. If I could figure out how to boost the view, I would. Oh, hang on. what was on there? Dropped. Falling into a pit. Okay, that's me back at the beginning, is it? Yep. You connect to the terminal number one main page. I can't buy any of them. Reservist. I don't know. Oh, God. Oh, I could get fireballs. I get some fireballs. Oh, oh, I've got that, okay. Oh, accessories. Oh, Problem was the market was diminishing so much. It was there wasn't really any motivation for developers to make games like this. Oh, even though Doom was a shareware title, a lot of work was put into it. And this was several years after Doom. Hang on, I've already been here. things from uh, Phantom Menace. They've been quite careful with the audio here. They've actually it sounds like they're doubling up the no shields. It sounds like they're doubling up the um, channel so they can give the the footsteps sound like they're coming from the centre rather than the sides. Give them a bit more. Nice big explosion. What's this thing there? Mm. 
Oops, wrong button. Well, I don't think they've done a bad job at all with this, to be honest. I think you've got bad reviews this game. It's quite like Doom as well. Apart from, you know, being fairly joyless, but... There's someone following me. Oh, there we go. I lost. Well, I might just have a quick look at the... Uh, readme and see what options there are, because we might be able to make this more interesting. Let's go temporarily eject it. Um... What's the best way to do this? Let's have a look. There we go. Back into workbench. Well, there was supposed to be a read on this disc. That takes up the entire disc. Interesting. Funny. Like all these different files. Okay. Right, that's read. The read me. Some features, 256. No chunky copper screen. Hmm. Okay, we have a window, we have a pixel size. Ah. Wants me to do numeric keypad things and I don't have a numeric keypad to do it with. So unfortunately I can't show that, unless I go and fetch another keyboard. This demo is made before, can we mention code optimization? Some minor features not implemented in this demo. Interesting, because this came out in January 96. Interesting, they're trying to argue the case. Please don't track her me breathless running the me 1200 at 320, 200 and a 1-1 fixable size to other engine running at. Da -da 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 -da. If you want to compare the game, please consider the other games. You must run at 2 2 pixel size and with a normal Mega 1200. The playability will not be compromised. Me other games run a small window, to, even on a fast machine. It does seem like a fast engine. Strength of the breathless region, it can run a similar same issues. If you have a more powerful Amiga breathless, take advantage of it. Some other region you can't do it. A simple RAM expansion mob frame rate. Hmm. They're really putting uh, saying how hard it is. Simply at not twenty forty man. We can't get consider to buy a cheap accelerator, yeah. So this is why power computing have got a hand in it, because they're really trying to use it to push their accelerators. And at the time, I think they were trying to license. They may have already licensed the rights to make Amiga clones. Um, they wanted to build their own Amiga machines. They did build their own Macs, I, I believe. I think I'm right. They did get the license to build Macs. Um, 
so they, they they were in that game, that's for sure. Of course, that all got killed off by Steve Jobs when he, uh, he released System 9, I think. Or it was System 9 or 8 where he um, removed... I think, let me get this right. I think System 9 required... Um, it was, was not covered by the daily done for System 8. So he pushed out System 9, which is effectively System 8, with just called System 9, and that um, meant that his deal with all the third parties ended. And uh, I think power computing is still around today. Anyway, that was one of the bleak Amiga format sets that cover this. Breathless wasn't too bad, not a bad thing to finish up on. Got bad reviews, but it wasn't, it wasn't too bad. So once again, thank you very much for um, following my channel, watching this video. Uh, very much appreciate it. I've now got four subscribers, which is great. Hopefully the next video is going to be a bit more exciting. This is very late at night and I'm a bit under the weather, to be honest. I'm not feeling 100% myself, not feeling full of joy and happiness sort of slightly measurable. Look at that, I'm sliding off the screen here. Let's get that back on the screen. Yeah, I'm, but um, still. Look at that, I'll just move that around a tad. There we go. Feels all skew -if. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter, we can fix these things. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me. If you like this video, please like or dislike or subscribe. Maybe it's helped you go to sleep or something like that. I don't know. Anyway, I'll catch you in the next one. I'm going to keep going. Until next time, ta-ta and uh, cheerio and all the rest of it.